Welcome back. This just in reaction from Moscow to the interview you just saw with U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, Russian Senator Konstantin Kosachev, chair of the International Affairs Committee, called Nikki Haley's comments calling for regime change in Syria sabotage. On Facebook, he writes, quote, calling a spade a spade, this is a direct sabotage of the international community's efforts to start a process of political negotiations between the authorities and the opposition. That reaction is perhaps a preview of what will be waiting for Secretary of State Rex Tillerson when he arrives in Moscow this week. I'm joined now by Democratic Senator Ed who serves on the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thanks so much for being here. No, thank you. Good to see you. So you heard the reaction from Moscow. Do you think the Trump administration might be making a mistake by saying there is no solution with Assad in power? Well, when um, the Trump administration uses the words regime change, they're talking about a military effort to remove Assad. And that would mean putting American young men and women on the ground uh, in battlefield conditions in order to accomplish that goal. So that would require ultimately a congressional approval because that would be a step of an incredible magnitude that would be breaking with the policy that we've had thus far. Well, you're saying that by Nikki Haley saying that they don't see any sort of political solution where Assad is in charge, that they are essentially saying they will push for regime, cha regi regime change and you think that that would mean more ground troops, U.S. ground troops, because there are, there are a few hundred in there right now. Absolutely. That's what regime change means. It means doing in Syria what we did in Iraq in removing Saddam Hussein. I don't think there's any appetite in the United States for a, a massive additional military presence with young men and women actually in combat situations being introduced. Instead, what the Trump administration should be talking about is massive uh, crippling sanctions on the Russian uh, company uh, that is the principal arms supporter for Syria and any other company or country in the world uh, that does business with that company, Rossa Baron. Uh, that's where it should begin. And then the discussion should go to, one, that the uh, Russians honor their commitment to remove all chemical weapons from Syria. They have not done that yet. Secondly, that they implement the ceasefire that they negotiated with Iran and Turkey uh, inside of Syria. That has not been honored. That there be an agreement that humanitarian aid can be distributed uh, throughout uh, uh, Syria. Uh, that has not actually been honored. And yeah. finally, that they go to the negotiating okay. table and they f try to find a political resolution with Assad, with all other parties at the table. So with Assad, can so he needs to be part of the negotiation, you think? In order to find an ultimate negotiated settlement, we must negotiate with the Syrian government. And the only way we can do that is if all parties, including the opposition, are at the table and that Russia and the United States are enforcing this goal of ensuring that that negotiated settlement results in a government that all parties can live with. I have not heard anybody from the Trump administration talk about calling for massive amounts of troops in, in Syria, but let me just ask you... But that's what regime change means. But There's do, no other way it can be accomplished. But do you think that there is a possible future for Syria with Assad in charge? Because what Nikki Haley was saying, what Ambassador Haley was saying, is she doesn't envision one. Well, again, that's where we have to wind up. But we have to go through a process by which we are tightening the noose around the Russian company, Rasa Baron, and anyone else that does business with it uh, that, is, uh, that is making it possible for Assad to stay in power. That's what we did in Iran uh, by crippling their oil industry. Now we must do the same thing with Russia and anyone else that is providing arms to Russia. And then at the end of the day, obviously our goal would be to make sure that Assad is removed, but we cannot do it by saying regime change because that's just a code for military intervention at a massive level by the United States. Let's talk about the military strike on Thursday night. Uh, on Friday, I spoke with Moaz Mustafa. He's the executive director of the Syrian Emergency Task Force, well known on Capitol Hill. He's been lobbying Congress for years for the U.S. government to do something to damage Assad. Take a listen to what he had to say about the missile strike.
I honestly want to start off by thanking the President of the United States for taking actions in response to the use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime against children. And, and I think that this might be the first step to now what I encourage to move uh, urgently to bring an end to all killing in Syria once and for all. Ambassador Haley additionally says that she has heard from all sorts of diplomats from all over the world praising President Trump for taking this action. Should President Obama have done this back in 2013? Would the world be a different and better place, you think, if President Obama had gone forward with his strike? You see Moaz Mustafa thanking President Trump. He's not a Trump supporter, but thanking President Trump for doing something against this horrible, murderous dictator. Well, the goal in 2013 was to remove the chemical weapons. Russia agreed that they were going to remove the chemical weapons, and 1,300 tons of chemical weapons were removed. Now, not, it turned, not enough, though. Well, it turns out that the Russians did not honor that agreement. And this strike uh, is something that begins, I think, a conversation with the Russians about the removal of all of the chemical weapons, which they did not complete. And I do agree that the strike was a good moment, but that's a tactic, not a strategy. We need a comprehensive strategy now as to how we are going to deal with Syria. And thus far, we have not heard that articulated by the government of the United States of America. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, Democrat from Hawaii, is against the strike. She's warning that Trump's intervention in Syria could lead to a nuclear war with Russia. She wrote, quote, this escalation is short-sighted and will lead to more dead civilians, more refugees, the strengthening of al-Qaeda and other terrorists, and a possible nuclear war between the United States and Russia. Is that a concern, do you think? Well, I think that the greater fear is that we just create another Iraq, uh, that we put ourselves into a, another civil war uh, between Shiites and Sunnis. We did it in Iraq. That's the real problem that we would have if we escalated our military involvement inside of Syria. Uh, and we would be trying to replace the, the Shia uh, with the Sunnis. Uh, and we, ju we did just the opposite in Iraq, where we replaced the Sunnis with the Shia. So if we do that, I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it leads to a nuclear war. I don't think it would. But I do think it would lead to a quagmire for the United States for a generation that we would regret, especially if we did it before we had a comprehensive debate on the floor of the United States and House, uh, House and Senate that gave Trump permission to go. I would not vote to allow him to do it, but the least the American people would be entitled to is that full debate. I, I want to ask you about North Korea. During the campaign, President Trump said he would be willing to talk to North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Take a listen. One of the papers called the other day, and they said, would you speak to the leader of North Korea? I said, absolutely. Why not? Why not? There's a 10% or a 20% chance that I can talk him out of those damn nukes, because who the hell wants him to have nukes? And there's a chance. Direct negotiation with North Korea by the president uh, would obviously be a significant departure from not just Obama policy, but, but American policy for decades. Do you support it if, if it were a possibility? I think the win-win with China would be this, that we say to China, if you tighten dramatically the sanctions on North Korea, that the United States will have direct talks with the North Koreans. I think that is the best formula to finally get the kinds of results that we're looking for. Otherwise, we're going to see continued escalation of ballistic missile tests, of nuclear weapons inside of that country. And the additional kind of stories coming out of Washington this past week that the United States is actually developing some plans uh, for the killing of Kim uh, or for deploying nuclear weapons inside of South Korea, that would lead to an escalation of tension that could lead to accidental nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula. But I'm going to register that as a yes, in direct talks. No. If China agrees to the sanctions, if China tightens the sanctions, direct talks, uh, and, the they're the, and they're the they're the principal country that can accomplish that goal, sure. then I believe the United States should engage in direct talks with Kim. That's going to be the best way to lower the the this bubbling, boiling cauldron of controversy that is spinning very quickly out of control. All right, Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, great to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate coming up inside the Situation Room, Trump's top advisors presenting a united front, but is there a battle brewing among them? What's really going on inside the West Wing? That's next.